the Embraer 195. Gonna reach these points near to Chernobyl. The overhead panel is very small. It's ATR, by the way. We are starting the engines. And very loud also. Yeah, very loud very engines. Loud. Pum, pum. Hello my friends and welcome. My name is Dennis and as you probably know I'm the Boeing 737 captain. A beautiful sunrise and we're gonna fly soon. And welcome on the historical flight over Kiev, so-called flight to nowhere. But today we have the specific reason we're gonna fly the so-called excursion flight over the Kiev and probably we will reach near to Chernobyl. We'll see. As you can see guys the flight over Kiev. Very unique thing, it's the first time we are performing this flight. There should be two flights, but first will be just today on 7th of March 2021. My friends, this is our approved flight plan. So here we have the Borispol airport and I'm gonna fly over the Kiev. So the Kiev is over here. It's a big city, the biggest city in Ukraine. And we're gonna fly through the Dnepr river. Then we're gonna fly over this huge lake on the north part of the Kyiv and we're gonna reach these points near to Chernobyl uh, station. So Chernobyl is actually here. First, our first attempt was just to fly near to this restricted and pre sorry prohibited areas to overfly. Uh, so a, at the altitude of 5,000 feet, we should have come closer to Chernobyl station, but Finally, just 10 hours prior departure flight, we had some restrictions from our Air Force, so they will not let us close to the borders, uh, closer than 25 kilometers to the border. So that's our further point that we can reach. But anyway, we have the uh, Duga. Duga is over horizon defense radar system that was built by Soviet Union, so probably we'll see it, and hopefully we'll see the. Uh, nuclear plant of Chernobyl uh, and then we're gonna fly to Gostomol airport this is the home base of Maria Antonov 225 the biggest airplane in the world hopefully we'll see it if not uh, we're just gonna make one circle and fly back from Kiev to fly over the Kiev and coming back to Borispol that's our flight plan and i think my friends that it is fantastic to fly this route okay let's go For, first will be the aviation security there is no passport control for us today because it's just a local domestic flight almost as usual This is our airplane for today, Embraer 195. It's a little bit windy, so sorry about the audio quality. And probably we'll perform the walk around. Why not? Uh, we have uh, heated or props, we have a uh, temperature sensor, we have uh, one more pitted uh, here, the nose of the airplane. Uh, it's very, uh, I would say, kind of smaller airplane compared to Boeing 737. Uh, once again, it has probes. Uh, that's the landing gear. It is smaller, of course, compared to Boeing. Here we have some lights, probably landing light and taxi light. I don't really know. We have one actuator, one hydraulic cylinder uh, for the nose wheel steering. And they have some lumps, no towing, towing. Interesting. On that place, on Boeing 737, we have just bypass pin. Uh, I can see the hydraulic cylinder for landing gear extension and retraction. Hopefully you can see it. And huge springs, <laughs> like on a motorcycle or something. Uh, kind of small door for the cargo compartment. The cargo compartment itself, uh, it's very high. What is here, here is the engine, uh, it's a turbofan engine and we have 24 blades for the fan. Uh, again, the temperature sensor for engine electronic control. Uh, the brake, brake wear indicators still have lots of brakes here. Everything is nice. Oh, wheel well. 
The other side is mainly the same. Actually, this is quite long airplane. It's even longer than 0.737-400, believe me or not. The cockpit. You can see it's a very modern cockpit. The overhead panel is very small. And the cabin compartment. It was quite cold outside, but here it's quite warm. My seat for this flight will be 29 Charlie. It's on the back of the airplane. That's the aisle seat. And I'll sit together with our guys from different countries, from Switzerland and many more. So I'll speak English. Hopefully I'll be able to film uh, some parts of our conversation. Uh, the rest of the pilot guides uh, will provide the information about our flight, about the Kiev, about Chernobyl, about the Gastomol airport, the home base for Antonov Airlines and Maria airplane. And the rest of the pilots, of course, will fly this airplane. They will not be disturbed by what is happening in the cabin compartment. The first passengers are coming. Great! So guys, almost all of the passengers uh, boarded this flight. We have full flight uh, for this uh, adventure trip, I would say. Uh, so we have uh, passengers, Kevin, Natalie and Mark. Uh, Mark is uh, the manager of uh, American Airlines in Barcelona. And he's also do, going through his pilot training. It's nice. Kevin, are you excited for today? I'm very happy to fly today. Yeah, great, great. It's a nice opportunity to fly today because the weather should be all right. It's quite loud announcement. Mm. Good from one side, but from the other side you won't hear me. All right, guys, it's now the demo time. Yes, it's very important to check out what emergency exits you have just nearby to you. Here we have just near the emergency exit from this side and from that side as well. Uh, the doors are already armed and checked. And just locate the nearby exits and try to find out where the life vest is if you are flying over the uh, sea or the ocean. We are starting the engines and soon we're gonna fly. Uh, runway 1 and left for us. Should be, at least. We are on the runway. The brakes released, everything is fine. Let's go. As you saw my friends, we still have flaps and we are maintaining uh, the speed of 160 knots here just to see something, because if we retract the flaps and fly very fast, we will not see anything. This is a very beautiful region over here. It's uh, during the summertime, there are lots of mosquitoes, but <laughs> <laughs> it's very fine this region.
good news because we have clouds, my friends. The front, the cold front is coming so yeah, but later on probably the sand a little bit uh, lower to see something, at least something. Unfortunately we cannot see anything, my friends, here. Very sadly. And we cannot descend lower because the minimum descent altitude here is 5,000 feet. So we are just across uh, the And now we are making the U-turn to fly uh, back over the water storage on the north part of Kiev. And then we're gonna fly over Gastomol Airport, the home base of Maria. We'll see it. We are trying to go through the clouds again. На самолете Ан-124. Это было кругосветное путешествие. Кстати, командиром корабля был Антонов тоже, но это тезка Олега Константиновича Антонова. The flight has just been finished and all the passengers now going to see the Boeing 777 so now we were the smallest airplane in our fleet and it's time to go for the largest airplane in our fleet sadly as you saw the cloud base was quite low yes we cannot control the weather we check the weather it should have been uh, better than it actually was my friends so we had what we had just a quick review of uh, Embraer cockpit I hope I'll make a review more full review about this uh, aircraft cockpit we're just waiting for the transportation bus uh, that's why I have a couple of minutes so as you see uh, the yoke is uh, quite different compared to uh, Boeing standard yoke uh, the navigation oh, here's ATR by the way uh, it's kind of dirty from the back but I used to fly this airplane before there's the PFD it more looks like ATR uh, instrument than a Boeing it has, we have the full navigation rows on the bottom here we can put all the systems we need it's not like on a laptop or something well we can choose uh, the standby instrument engine instruments very similar to uh, Airbus indication uh, CDU and there's the flight control modes because yes this airplane is fly by a wire airplane it's uh, like Airbus or like modern Boeing's uh, Boeing 787 that's the display for the camera and uh, yes the overhead panel as you can see not many switches compared to Boeing uh, because it's more modern, modern much modern airplane 
it was designed later compared to Boeing 737 that is why you can see very modern displays and uh, everything is so nice I would say here it's for pedestal it's for everything it is a great plane but I don't feel comfortable here because yeah the philosophy is very different compared to Boeing but still I like it I like it a lot bum, bum. The passengers are already inside. If you want to see the review about this airplane, I have it on my in one of my videos on my channel, so please check it out. Dobry rano. Dobry rano. Dobry rano. Dobry rano. This is the Boeing 777 cockpit. We still have a couple of minutes here. Uh, as you can see, everything is very, very Boeing style. Uh, so we have understandable MCP. As for me, we have understandable screens and uh, all of the systems, wires, etc. Uh, the overhead panel is nice. Eh, I like it. If you want to see a more detailed review, there is the video on my channel about the a Boeing triple cell so you may check that out and probably I'll also film one more video telling you more detailed features of this particular cockpit <laughs> a few moments later all right guys here we are in the bar with Kevin Kevin is from Switzerland and he's aviation enthusiast and just want to say just want to ask a couple of questions uh, Kevin, did you like the today's uh, flight? So first, good afternoon. Uh, as uh, Dennis said, I'm an aviation fan. So uh, today I took part in uh, the flight over Kyiv of Ukraine International. And uh, yes, I really liked the, the flight, uh, especially when we flew over Kyiv city with the view on uh, Moselland and it was very nice. Very cool to make uh, pictures. Yes. Kevin, was it okay for you to fly on Embraer 190 or you expected uh, maybe bigger aircraft to fly? Was it comfortable for you? Uh, what do you think about it? So, uh, yes, it was comfortable to fly on Embraer 195. Uh, it's a good, pla good plane and uh, we had a lot of uh, place for the legs. And yes, it was uh, awaited. I already waited to fly on this plane. Oh, uh, we took this airplane because it has uh, four seats in a row, you know. Because uh, on the Boeing 737 we have three, uh, three composition. That is why if you have the aisle seat, you won't see anything from it. Yes. And to the video. Now I was uh, sitting in the aisle and I saw almost everything. Kevin and later on we went to Triple Seven. Was it your, uh, was it your first visit? to this airplane or have, have you ever flown this uh, big airplane before? So I flew one time on the Boeing 777 but on Swiss mm -hmm. from uh, Zurich to Athens. Okay, was it the same uh, type Boeing 777-200 or was it the bigger version? Mm, no, it was the bigger 777-300. Uh, oh, 777-300. Yes. Wow. Nice. Uh, so, uh, but it was the first time for you to visit the cockpit, right? Yes, my first time to visit the cockpit. Oh, right. And I enjoyed a lot also to take place in the captain's seat. <laughs> it was really funny, yes, and <laughs> great moment. Kevin, uh, have you ever flown the airplane? Like a small, maybe some... So, one time tried? I could try to fly for a few seconds on an uh, Antonov AN2. Wow. Uh, in uh, Western Switzerland. Oh, you have the Anton of two in Western Switzerland? Yes, we have one Anton of wow, based near Geneva. Uh -huh. Wow. I, is it used for skydiving or some aviation patrolling? No, it's only for leisure flights. Oh. They plan one time per month. Mm. They fly with passengers and they could take part on one flight. Oh, because here in Ukraine they are mostly for skydiving or patrolling the areas or maybe for crop flying you know uh, ah, yes okay. for agriculture purposes where did you like him ton of two it's uh, maybe uh, yeah. the biggest uh, biplane airplane flying right now probably. yes I, I liked because we flew over Geneva Lake mm, it's and it's, uh, the plane is slow 
Mm -hmm. So you have uh, time to make good photos and to see the, the view, the great view. Yes. Oh, fantastic. And I know that near to the lake there are also big mountains, so nice size scenes. Uh, what airport name is there? It's a small, is it the small air club or...? It? Uh, it's a small airport that is called uh, Prangin. Mm. Yes, it's uh, approximately 20 kilometers from Geneva. Mm. Kevin, do you like flight simulators? Or what, what is your attitude? Because I know you are aviation enthusiast. Uh, do you like, uh, maybe you fly the flight simulators or maybe you don't like them? Yes, no, I like, I fly on uh, flight simulator 10. Uh, okay, yes. FS, it's a Microsoft, uh, not the 2020 like it was released earlier yes, last year. Exactly, oh, I, okay, st okay. I still have the old uh, simulator. I also have them, it installed on my computer. Nice flight simulator by the way. Yes. And Kevin, you arrived many times to Ukraine, so what is your next uh, purpose? Uh, what is your next aim to see here? Maybe aviation related uh, teams, uh, themes you know you want to see here. Um, what are you going to fly maybe? What is your next flight? My next flight uh, will be from uh, Kiev to Kherson. Oh, okay. And I will uh, fly on Ambara 145. Oh, I know, it's uh, wind rolls, yes? Yes, exactly. Okay. Because they, uh, they will soon retire this uh, plane. Oh, I see. So, so I will uh, fly one time again uh, on board this plane before it's gone. And uh, you are a fan of mad dogs, yes? Yes, uh, sure, exactly. Uh, which of mad dogs you like? Mad dogs, my friends, it's um, McDonald Douglas. It's MD80, MD90. So we have, uh, we saw today the one mad dog on an apron yes. probably it's uh, uh, what is the name bravo airways or uh, it's bravo airways oh, mcdonald so douglas yes yeah, yeah. so my favorite type of uh, mcdonald douglas is md 82 82 oh. yes this is something different with the md 80 uh compared to md 80 yeah uh, no but uh, there is different types md 80 Mm -hmm. And the MD87, for example, that is uh, shorter. Oh, I see. But uh, MD87 doesn't fly anymore. I think. Oh, I see, I see. I know, guys. In the United States, there are still many of uh, MDs flying, but they also going to retire. Quite old planes, but you still may find. Uh, so take the chance if you are aviation lover to fly those very rare airplanes. <laughs> Yes, I confirm, yes. <laughs> uh, have you ever flown very retro, retro airplanes? Well, we, you spoke about Antonov 2. What about the uh, Boeing uh, 707 or something? Uh, I never flew on Boeing 707, but I flew on uh, Antonov 24 of Motorzic. Oh, nice. I flew two times from one time from Kiev to Zaporizhia mm. and one time from Zaporizhia to Zuliani mm -hmm. to Kiev, so, and then from Kiev to Lviv. You know, Antonov, I used to fly Antonov 26, it's the cargo version of Antonov 24 and uh, actually I was flying abroad from Istanbul to Athens and back every night flight. Okay. And it was actually my commercial pilot license training. I oh. went on uh, Antonov 26. And you know, it has very old school cockpit. And then I started to fly on the ATRs. I just went to Motor Stitch airline, uh, the one I said. I just uh, came to the cockpit after the landing and I saw the instruments and I, I just didn't realize how I, how, how I was able to fly uh, that airplane. <laughs> <laughs> no satellite navigation, nothing. Yes. Oh, you need to have the um, extra GPS receiver. Uh, but it's not connected through your navigation system, so you have to do everything manually. The autopilot wasn't working. So, ah, uh, interesting airplane. It's very rare. Inside it's like a big bus, yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> that's, that's true. Big old bus. And very loud also. Yeah, very loud very and loud. giant. Uh, the special thing about the airplane is it, uh, the propeller rotation speed is the same on idle and on maximum power but what is changes the uh, 
pitch of the propeller blade on that aircraft. Very interesting airplane. And yes, I confirm it's a very loud airplane. Yes. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for watching us. Uh, thank you. Thank Kate. you very much and goodbye. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. See you. All right, guys, it was a fantastic experience for me and for our passengers. And I hope you will like this video. Because if you do, if you did, you are awesome guy. It means that you need to follow also the awesome guy checklist. Firstly, like this video, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, whatever it means. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time. Pam pam.